Today we're going to be talking about how to express this repeating decimal as a ratio of integers. And in this particular problem, we've been given the repeating decimal 1.5342, and we've been told that the 42 is repeating. That's what the bar over 42 means, that the 42 repeats. So in other words, if we continue writing out this decimal, what we get here is 42, 42, 42, forever. So this 42 keeps getting strung out. Now, in order to express this repeating decimal as a ratio of integers, what we're going to need to do is first express this repeating decimal number as a geometric series. Then we're going to use this formula here, a divided by 1 minus r, to find the sum of that geometric series, and that'll help us express this as a ratio of integers. And by ratio of integers, we just mean a fraction with a whole number in the numerator and a whole number in the denominator. So in order to first express this as a geometric series, the first thing that we need to figure out is the place, the decimal place of the repeating portion of our decimal. So what we know here is that this 5 is in the tens place, that the 3 is in the hundredths place, and we're talking decimal places here, that the 4 is in the thousandths place, and that the 2 here is in the ten thousandths place, like this. So given that, we want to look at the decimal place of the last part of the repeated part of our decimal. So sometimes with these kind of problems, you can have a sequence of three numbers that keeps getting repeated or four numbers. You always want to look at the rightmost or the last decimal place. So we wouldn't look at this decimal place because that's where the repetition starts. We would look at this last decimal place here because this is where it ends. This is the rightmost decimal place. So we're interested in the ten thousandths decimal place. So now in order to express this as a series, what we're going to do is we're going to take the part that's not repeated and we're going to put that out in front. So our 1.53 here is not part of what's repeating. So we're going to take that out and we're going to say 1.53 plus, and now here's where we're going to start our geometric series. And the geometric series is what's going to express this repeated decimal. So here we're going to have 42, we're going to take the whole sequence, the whole repeated sequence, 42, and we're going to divide that by this decimal place that we're interested in. So we're going to say plus 42 over 10,000. And we could keep going with this because if we look at the next set, this next 42, that would be 42 over the next last decimal place, the decimal place on this 2 here which is always just going to be two more zeros than the last decimal place we were interested in. So here we had four zeros, this time we'll have six zeros, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and we can see if we add our commas that that is the millionths place. And we could keep going like that if we want to, but we don't really need to. So once you've done that, now what you want to do is factor out the first term here. So what we'll do is 1.53 plus we're going to have this same thing here, 42 over 10,000, like this, but we're going to factor that out of the series that comes after it. So what do we have to multiply by 42 over 10,000 to get 42 over 10,000? Well, always just one. That's always going to be the case since we're going to factor out this entire value. Here for the second term, we have to multiply by 1 in the numerator because 42 times 1 is 42. In the denominator, we need to add two more zeros to this 10,000 in order to get to the million. So since we need to add two more zeros, we need to put 100 here in the denominator because multiplying by 100 will add its two additional zeros like that. So we'll get 1 plus 1 over 100, and if we kept doing this, we would need to add two zeros each time. So we'd get plus 1 over, instead of two zeros this time, four zeros which is obviously a thousand, plus dot, 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 and we could continue it like that. So now we've factored out the first term here of our geometric series, so that the series now is simpler and starts with one. Your series now here should always begin with one. Once you have the series in this form, you have everything you need to express the series as a sum. So with the series in this form, what you can say is that this value, the value that you factored out, this is a. 
and that this value, the value that comes immediately after the one, so not the one, but the term immediately following it, that is going to be our value for r. Now keep in mind that if you ever have a negative sign right here, you need to include that as well in your value for r. But we're going to pull out the values for a and r, and we're going to plug them into this formula here. This is the formula that gives us the sum of a geometric series. Keep in mind that we're always going to have to add to that 1.53. We can't forget about that part. This a divided by 1 minus r only represents the series which begins and ends here, this part. So we're going to get 1.53 plus, and now here's where we, in, in place of this series we wrote out, put in the sum of the series. So a we know is 42 over 10,000, and we're going to be dividing that by 1 minus r, which we know is 1 over 100. All right, so now it's just a matter of simplifying this as much as we can. So the first thing we want to do is find a common denominator within our denominator. So what we want to do is multiply this 1 by 100 over 100, and what we'll get is 100 over 100. And now we can say 100 over 100 minus 1 over 100 is 99 over 100, and that's our new denominator. Now we have a fraction divided by a fraction, and what we can do with that is instead of dividing the numerator by the denominator, we can multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. So this changes to 1.53 plus 42 over 10,000, and now instead of dividing by this fraction, we multiply and flip the fraction upside down, so we get 100 over 99, like that. Now we can clearly see that we're going to get these two zeros here to cancel from the numerator and the two zeros here to cancel from the denominator. What we're left with is 1.53 plus 42 over 100 times 1 over 99. When we multiply these two values together here, we'll get 1.53 plus 42 over 9900. All right, so now we've simplified this fraction. We need to turn this into a fraction as well because remember we've been asked to express this as a ratio of integers. Ratio just means fraction. Integers, we need whole numbers, not decimal numbers here. In order to change this 1.53 into whole numbers, we can move the decimal point over two places. But when we move it over two places, we have to divide by 100 in order to not actually change the value of this. So what we get is 153 over 100 plus 42 over 9900. And at this point, all we need to do is find a common denominator. So what's the least common denominator of 100 and 9900? Well, I could multiply this 100 by 99, or what we could do is divide this 9900 by 3, so we can multiply numerator and denominator by one third, that'll give us 3300 in the denominator. And then we can just multiply this fraction here by 33. So 33 over 33. And as you can see, we'll get 3300 in the denominator of the first fraction and 3300 in the denominator of the second fraction. That's our least common denominator. And you don't need to worry about exactly the one in this problem. Just find the least common denominator of your fractions in your problem. So in that case, 33 times 153 is 5049 over 3300. Now we have 42 times 1 third, which is 14. 9900 times 1 third is 3300. And when we add 5049 and 14, we get 5063 over 3300. And that's it, that's our final answer. Surprisingly, you can't simplify this fraction any further. So 5063 over 3300 is the ratio of integers that expresses our repeating decimal. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.